cute characters, how to draw cute characters, give them the features of a baby, make characters look more like a baby, give them big eyes, give them a big forehead, make the other features small, make them simplistic. I'd say it's the most well-covered ground in character design advice. It's the same advice over and over, and you're most likely familiar with all of those ideas. But does that automatically mean that everyone that applies these ideas gets universally successful cute characters? Well, that's why we're here today. There's five things that can still prevent your characters from being successfully cute, so let's fix them. Our first element has to do with interest. I think it's worth bringing up, as you probably expected me to, one of the most successful cute character designs in recent memory is the child, colloquially Baby Yoda from The Mandalorian. I would say that very few disagree with the fact that this is a really charming and endearing character, so interest has to do with all of the factors that don't necessarily make our characters cute or work against it. In this case, all of the wrinkles and features that make this character look like an elderly person, the white hair, the drooping mouth, even the green skin. Now for people that were already Star Wars fans, the idea that this is an offshoot of the Yoda character design makes this character more intriguing. For a character like Stitch, it can be the sharp teeth, the alien arms and spikes, and the propensity for evil, or at the very least, mischief. So if your goal was to just create a cute character, these are things that you'd probably steer away from adding to a design, and yet, they're part of what helps them to succeed as good character designs overall. Interest is, at the very least, a small twist of your character's cuteness status quo, something that adds an amount of complexity to their visuals or personality. It's something that helps keep them from our second point, which is homogeny. Now bear with this comparison since there is a difference between something being cute and someone being attractive, but a lot of times the standards and reasons given for attractiveness have to do with a lack of flaws, a lack of imperfections, the corners being sanded off as it were, perfect skin, symmetry of the face, and things like that. And yet, here's an example we've used before, this is the aggregate average of human faces by country from around the world. Now because of the averaging out of the pictures taken, the result is a face that is without flaws or individualistic features. They are very nice looking, but apart from some distinctive traits like skin color, the eye, nose, and head shape, these faces are hard to tell apart from each other. So this is relatively nuanced, but the principle of character design that this calls upon is contrast. It's like we're sanding down our character's nose to spite their face. Yes, there are some principles of character design that contribute to cute designs, but if we only follow these things as if they were rules, for example, if we only used round shape language, it will end up with designs that are technically cute and visually inoffensive and very likely uninteresting and homogenous. Like we talked about with the child and Stitch, don't be afraid of using something distinctive. Instead of operating solely to make something cute, prioritize authentic personality. Homogeny can also happen when you're just borrowing from other artists' library of features and shapes instead of developing your own. Speaking of authenticity, the opposite of that is artifice. Now I want you to think of two different children, a kid who does something that is genuinely funny, they say something surprising, they're goofy or endearing just by being themselves and acting their age, and now think of a kid who can tell that they're funny. They act precocious. They say things that they think older people will think are funny. Maybe they use it to get away with things. Now which one is going to endear you and which one is going to repel you? Now as artists, sometimes the effort that we put in to making a character's expression, features, or personality cute easily backfires for this very reason. The lathering on of saccharine cuteness at the expense of something real can easily feel to our audience like we are forcing something. The idea of a character with a sense of aren't I so cute can repel more than it endears. Now from a practical standpoint, this might mean that the design or subject matter that we start with is unconventional or non-traditionally cute, or that we do what we can to, again, put a more dimensional sense of personality into a character beyond that shallow or fleeting top layer. Now to put it another way, think about how unpleasant it is to try to swallow a half cup of granulated sugar all at once by itself instead of using it to sweeten as an ingredient in something more structured like a cake. For me, I feel like I was eventually successful with the character of Biko, not because my ultimate goal was to make a cute character. In actuality, earlier versions of the character were uglier and grumpier, but in an effort to make him more relatable to the audience for the benefit of the story so that we can empathize with what he goes through, it felt right to simplify some of his features. The result is something that has some of the literal and metaphorical tooth of the original. And nothing about the character is defined by appealing visuals, 
he's just a guy going about his job. Now this next reason is purely technical and is often the result of limited skill. The uncanny valley is when something's resemblance to something human or relatable leaves the boundaries of belief. And this usually happens because the amount of realism or level of detail given to a character has become too contradictory to the abstraction that a character has. Now in the other direction though, a lack of technical skill or experience can cause a design to look lifeless, soulless, or have an imbalance in detail. So we talk a lot about how a mistake in construction or perspective can break the illusion of depth. Well, an uncanny mistake in a character can break the illusion of life. Now there is little more disturbing on the earth than the bootleg paintings of Disney characters on the side of daycares. And that's a prime example of why experience and skill make all the difference, especially when the character is trying to make an appeal to the viewer. Second to last point, and perhaps a lesser one, is a lack of purpose or function. So a series that succeeds greatly because of the cuteness of its characters is Animal Crossing. And I think that within the game, the cuteness of a character is both a docile aesthetic and a non-threatening function. So this is a game meant for escapism to a degree, and the interaction that you have with the characters is mainly through dialogue and expression. The goal is to befriend them. Now already the proportions of the characters contribute to a cute look because of that, and the overall average of cuteness is high within the game. However, by no means is every character necessarily cute. And at least as long as the series has been around, they aren't always docile towards you either. That's changed a bit recently. There are enough odd looking, plain looking, quirky villagers in Animal Crossing that if your goal is to only collect some aesthetically good ones, you might have to let a few move out. There are some jarring, even creepy looking villagers, especially in the hamster family. Pietro the clown sheep was in Tay's village. First thing he said to her was how nice she smelled and he teleported around the island. He didn't last long. Remember that a lot of what we do with a character that is cute, just like we would with a child or puppy, is projection, imbuing something that is simple and charming, perhaps innocent, with what we want to see. And while the characters have a certain amount of stock personality, you are left to project onto them with given gifts, catchphrases, and inferences to develop them into a digital person that you know, or just develop an irrational hatred of like Charlize the Bear. The point is that all of these factors make a really good case for why the characters look the way they do, specifically cute, simplified abstractions. So just the same as you would when making any art decisions around style or otherwise, figure out why your characters need to be cute or to what degree it will benefit the story or purpose to do so. Again, we wanna move beyond them being a tacked on artifice and instead give them real purpose. The next point is one I've driven home a lot on this channel. It has to do with my personal definition of appeal, which is beyond something just being appealing, I tend to find that the motion and lines within a design unifying and working together, solving multiple problems with one solution, leads to good appeal. For example, the beautiful new Crash Bandicoot design, done by my friend Nick, solves multiple problems in the geometry of the head and moves in a particular direction. Now, if we took all of those rules and principles of cute characters that we talked about at the beginning, big eyes, big head, small features, but we didn't apply any appeal, you'd get the majority of the human sculpts for Funko Pop figures. All of the elements are there, and you may not agree with me, but this is not cute or appealing. Beyond the eyes being soulless, there is no unity between the features. Another example that I will see in beginner or amateur art is a change to a character's eye shape, whether neutral or in an expression, that breaks the appeal of a face, really those lines in the face. Concave lines under the eyes like this not only defy what's plausible in expression, but it now throws off where those lines are pointing. If and when you do something like this, make sure to retain some of the lines or shapes that might help this situation. In this case, the impression of the lower eyelid. I use the eye as an example because they're about 90% responsible for our success, but the same idea applies to other features as well. We talk about appeal and cuteness and good character design overall in my course Learn Character Design at learncharacterdesign.com, and if you want, we can revisit this topic of cuteness soon because if you couldn't tell, I have a lot to say. This month's Speakos backpack looks like this. You can grab it on patreon.com slash bageldenizen and make sure you're following over on Instagram at bageldenizen. We've been sharing a lot there recently. Thanks for watching and have fun creating.